Have you ever sat with a delicious piece of chocolate and wondered how it's made? Well, you're not alone. The process of making chocolate is a fascinating journey, one that takes us from the humble cocoa bean to the luscious chocolate bar we all know and love. And the best part, this journey doesn't have to take place in a far-off factory or exotic location. In fact, it can happen right in your own kitchen. Imagine the satisfaction of biting into a piece of chocolate that you've made yourself. From selecting the perfect cocoa beans to adding just the right amount of sugar, every step in the process is a chance to put your personal touch on this beloved treat. It's a fun, rewarding, and yes, delicious experience. So, are you ready to take the plunge and become a home chocolatier? Today we're going to explore how we can make chocolate right in our own kitchens. To start with, we need to gather the right ingredients. Chocolate making is an art and the quality of your artwork depends heavily on the quality of your colors, or in this case, the ingredients. First in line are the cocoa beans. These are the heart and soul of your chocolate. You'll need to find high quality, ethically sourced beans for the richest flavors. Next up, we have sugar. It's the sweet symphony that plays alongside the robust notes of the cocoa. Opt for organic, unrefined sugar for a healthier choice and a more nuanced flavor profile. Finally, we can't forget about the cocoa butter. This is what gives your homemade chocolate its creamy, melt-in-your-mouth texture. It's the secret ingredient that ties the cocoa and sugar together into a harmonious blend. Remember friends, the better the ingredients, the better the chocolate. Now that we have our ingredients, let's move on to the next step. The first step in the process is roasting the cocoa beans. Roasting is a pivotal stage in our chocolate-making journey. Undoubtedly, cocoa beans are the heart of chocolate, and roasting them is like unlocking their full potential. We're not just applying heat here. We're coaxing out the hidden flavors and aromas that make chocolate so enticing. So how do we go about it? Well, it's all about balance and patience. We want to roast the beans at a steady temperature, ideally between 290 and 325 degrees Fahrenheit. This temperature range is the sweet spot for cocoa beans, encouraging them to shed their raw, earthy taste and embrace a rich, chocolatey persona. The length of roasting time is another crucial factor. Typically, it can range from 20 to 30 minutes, depending on the size of the beans and the desired flavor profile. However, it's essential to remember that the beans continue to roast a bit even after they're removed from the heat due to residual heat. So, it's wise to pull them out just a smidge before they reach your preferred level of roastiness. As the beans roast, a magical transformation takes place. The heat gently permeates the beans, breaking down their complex sugars and proteins. This process, known as the Maillard reaction, is what gives rise to the beans' characteristic chocolate flavors. It's the same reaction that browns a steak or gives bread its delicious crust. Now you might be wondering, how do I know when my beans are perfectly roasted? Well, your senses are your best guide. Listen for the beans to start cracking. Assign their nearing readiness. Look for a dark brown color and most importantly, trust your nose. The aroma should be heavenly, a heady blend of cocoa, caramel, and a hint of fruitiness. With our beans nicely roasted, we're ready to move on to the next step. And that, my friends, is where the real fun begins. So buckle up as our chocolate making adventure is just getting started. Now that our beans are roasted, we need to grind them into a paste. The grinding process is an important milestone in our homemade chocolate journey. It's where we begin to see the transformation of the humble cocoa bean into the rich, velvety chocolate that we all know and love. You might be wondering why do we need to grind the beans? Well, the answer lies in the nature of the cocoa bean itself. Inside each bean are tiny particles of cocoa and sugar. By grinding the beans, we break down these particles to such a fine degree that they turn into a smooth, liquid paste. This paste is the very base of our chocolate. Now let's talk about the tool of the trade, the grinder. While there are many types of grinders available on the market, for our purpose, a simple kitchen grinder will do the job just fine. It's important to remember that the grinding process is not a quick one. It requires patience. We need to grind the beans slowly to ensure that we are breaking down all the particles evenly. The grinding process is also where we begin to see the cocoa butter, the natural fat present in the bean, start to melt. This is a good thing as the cocoa butter will act as a binding agent, holding our chocolate together. As we grind, we'll notice the beans transforming from a coarse, grainy texture to a smooth, liquid paste. This is the result of the heat generated by the grinding process, which causes the cocoa butter to melt and mix with the ground cocoa and sugar particles. This transformation is a sight to behold, or rather, a texture to feel. 
You'll know you've ground the beans enough when the paste is so smooth that it flows easily, almost like a thick syrup. So there we have it. Our roasted cocoa beans have now become a smooth liquid cocoa paste, ready to be turned into delicious homemade chocolate. With our cocoa paste ready, we can now proceed to the next step. It's time to add the remaining ingredients to our cocoa paste. This is where our homemade chocolate starts to take on the sweet and creamy characteristics we all know and love. We've got our cocoa paste ready, and now we'll be adding in two key ingredients, sugar and cocoa butter. In chocolate making, sugar is more than just a sweetener. It's an essential component that balances the bitterness of the cocoa and brings out its rich, complex flavors. But the amount of sugar you add can greatly influence the taste of your final product. For a darker, more bitter chocolate, you might want to use less sugar. For a sweeter, milkier chocolate, feel free to add a bit more. Now, let's talk about cocoa butter. This is the ingredient that gives chocolate its melt-in-your-mouth quality. It's a type of fat that's solid at room temperature but melts at body temperature, which is why chocolate feels so smooth and luxurious on your tongue. To incorporate these ingredients into our cocoa paste, we're going to use a process called conching. We'll slowly mix in the sugar and cocoa butter, making sure to distribute them evenly throughout the paste. This process also helps to further refine the texture of our chocolate, making it even smoother and more velvety. Remember, we're not just mixing here, we're also aerating. As we stir the paste, we're incorporating air into it, which can help to mellow out any harsh flavors and give our chocolate a more rounded taste. So, how long should you conch for? Well, the longer you do it, the smoother your chocolate will be. But don't worry if you don't have all day to spend on this. Even just a few minutes of thorough mixing can make a big difference. With all our ingredients mixed together, we're almost at the finish line. But before we can enjoy our homemade chocolate, there's one more step to complete. Stay tuned, as we're about to shape and cool our chocolate, turning it into a treat that's ready to enjoy. Now comes the fun part, shaping and cooling the chocolate. The chocolate mixture you've been working on is now ready to take its final form. This is where you can get creative, as the shape of your chocolate is entirely up to you. You could choose to keep it simple with a classic bar shape, or you could go wild with a variety of fun and intricate molds. Maybe you fancy a chocolate shape like your favorite animal, or perhaps a heart-shaped chocolate to gift to someone special. The possibilities are truly endless. To shape your chocolate, carefully pour the mixture into your chosen molds. Be sure to do this slowly to avoid any spills or air bubbles. Once you've filled your molds, gently tap them on your work surface to ensure the chocolate settles evenly and to eliminate any remaining air pockets. Now before we let our chocolate cool, we have an opportunity to add some extras. This is completely optional but it can be a great way to personalize your chocolate further. You could sprinkle in some crushed nuts for a bit of crunch or perhaps some dried fruits for a sweet and tangy surprise. If you're a fan of a little spice, a pinch of chili flakes can give your chocolate a surprising kick. Once you're happy with your additions, it's time to let your chocolate cool and harden. This process can take a few hours at room temperature, but if you're as impatient as I am when it comes to chocolate, you can speed up the process by popping your molds into the fridge. Just remember to be patient, as the chocolate needs to fully set before it can be removed from the molds. When the chocolate is completely hardened, carefully remove it from the molds. If you've done everything right, you should now be looking at your very own homemade chocolate. Each piece is a testament to your effort and creativity, and every bite will be a reminder of the journey you took to create it. And there you have it, your very own homemade chocolate. Making chocolate at home might seem complicated, but it's a fun and rewarding process. We've journeyed together from the very beginning, starting with gathering our ingredients, right through to the final rewarding product. Each step, from roasting the cocoa beans to grinding them into a fine powder, is a testament to the art of patience and precision. Adding the remaining ingredients, shaping and cooling the chocolate, we've seen how these seemingly simple steps come together to create something truly magical. It's been an adventure, one filled with the rich aroma of cocoa and the sweet promise of homemade chocolate. And now, it's your turn. Embrace the process, experiment with different flavors, add your own unique touch. Remember, the best part about making your own chocolate is the freedom to make it exactly how you like it. So, why not give it a try? You might just discover a new favorite hobby, and a delicious one at that. 